today's lesson is on the fundamentals of probability. So we need to go through some definitions. So we're going to be using an example of tossing a coin. So we're going to assume that it's equally likely to land on either heads or tails for our experiment. So let's go through some of these terms. The first term is experiment. An experiment is any occurrence where the outcome is uncertain. For example, the toss of a coin. When you toss a coin, you're not sure if it's going to be heads or tails um, as long as it's a fair coin. Next, we have sample space. The sample space is the set of all possible outcomes of the experiment. So in our example about the coin toss, you're either going to get a heads or a tails. So that is our sample space and we're going to use set notation for that. The next term is event. An event is any subset of the sample space. For example, uh, let's say you, you tossed the coin once and uh, your event would be, well let's go ahead and actually toss the coin and see what happens. Looks like it's tails so our event will say is tails, okay? So the theoretical probability is if the event E has N of E, remember that's the number of items in the event, is equally likely out, has equally likely outcomes and its sample space S has N of S equally likely outcomes, then the theoretical probability of an event denoted P of E is equal to the number of outcomes in the event n of e over the total number of outco possible outcomes n of s. The probability is a number expressed between 0 and 1. So let's say we're talking about the theoretical probability of the coin landing on tails. So we have the probability of tails. Well n of e which tells us the number of elements in E is 1. But N of S, the sample space, has two possible outcomes. So there's only one way to get a tails out of two ways to get either heads or tails. So when we do N of E over N of S, that gets us 1 out of 2. So you have a 1 half chance or probability of getting a tails if you flip a coin. Now I know a lot of you already knew that but we wanted to make sure you understood the definition of the probability of any equally likely event. So some general facts that you need to know when we're working with probability um, problems are you need to know something about uh, dice. You need to know something about a deck of cards and I know a lot of us already know um, about dice and cards but when I was teaching face-to-face -face, I realized that a lot of students don't know or haven't used dice or deck of cards so I'm gonna assume that you don't know and we're gonna explain them. So a dice um, the word dice is actually plural so if you ever need just one then it's going to be called a die. So the singular form of dice is die. So if they say one die, we're talking about just a singular dice. Okay. Now there's six sides to a standard die. Each face is numbered one through six and it only appears once. Each face is equally likely to appear on top when rolled. So this first dice um, has a four being rolled because that's what's on top. That's how we roll on, on the blue die. And then I'm going to do the other die. The other done die would appear to be have rolled a two because that's what's on top. Okay. And they're usually equally likely. So it's usually a probability of one sixth that you'll get any one of those numbers. Now a deck of cards has a whole lot more information going on with it. But I know there's some people that haven't used a deck of cards before. 
Um, so we're going to go through that. Um, lots of probability problems use deck of cards. So even if you're like, I'm never going to use a deck of cards in my life, it doesn't really matter. For this unit, you need to know some basic information about a deck of cards. So there are 52 cards in a standard deck. There are four suits. We have clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades. Each one of those suits has 13 cards in that suit. There are two colors, 26 red. The red is consists of diamonds and hearts. And there are 26 black cards consisting of clubs and spades. There are three different face cards. There are jacks, queens, and kings of each suit. So there's four jacks, four queens, four kings. And then there are 13 different um, face values. We have A is your ace. Sometimes it's used as a one, depending on what game you're talking about. Two through ten, jack, queen, and king. Now the aces um, are sometimes denoted as one, sometimes denoted as A, but they are not a face card because there's not a face on the card. Okay, so even though it has a letter, it's not a face card. So then, right below here is an example of a 52 card playing deck. Notice in clubs you have one of each A through 10 and then one jack, one queen, and king. Same for diamonds, same for hearts, and same for spades. Sometimes they use colors, so black is going to be spades and clubs. Sometimes they're talking about uh, colors for red would be diamonds and hearts. So if you need to continue to refer back to this, um, then you can go ahead and do so for your problems. So for our first example, we have a six-sided die. It's only rolled once. So find the probability of rolling the following. So my sample space, let's first decide what my sample space is. I could possibly have a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six in my sample space. Therefore, n of s is six. Part A, find the probability of rolling a two. So if my event, we'll call it E, is the sample space of just two, we can say that the number of E is only one because there's only one way you could get a two. So my probability of that event is going to be N of E over N of S, which is going to be one out of six. All right. Uh, a more simple way of writing that might just be so this is my answer. But a more simple way of writing it could be P of rolling a 2. So you could just say P of 2. There's only one way of getting that out of 6. That's also another way of writing it without having to write all of that stuff about E. Um, our next problem is what's the probability of rolling a number less than 4? Okay, so this event is different. So less than 4. 1 is less than 4, 2 is less than 4, and 3 is less than 4. But 4 is not less than 4. So we just have 1, 2, and 3. So n of e this time is 3. There's three different ways that you could have a number less than 4. So the probability of this event is going to be 3 out of 6. And I can reduce that to a half. Another way of writing this a little bit more succinctly without having the e you could have written p of less than 4. There's three ways of that happening at a 6, and that reduces to a half. And our next problem is the probability of rolling a number greater than 7. So for this event, with my die that goes from 1 through 6, how many different ways could I roll a number greater than 7? Well, it isn't. There isn't any. So my E event is going to be the empty set. So N of E is 0. So the probability of this event happening is going to be 0 out of 6, which is just 0. A shorter way of writing that without the E notation would be P of greater than 7 
is equal to 0 over 6 or just 0.